Okay, welcome back to this slightly strange title with serving addresses to geo coordinates and vice versa using OpenStreetMap and ArcGIS. I don't know how many people have heard about OpenStreetMap before. What about the other ones? <laughs> Come on. And ArcGIS? Okay, about the same amount of people. Cool. <laughs> Uh, my name is Andreas Scherbaum. I'm actually from Germany, but more often here in the Bay Area. In case you haven't noticed, I run the South Bay post school meetup in and around Palo Alto every other month. I work with Postgres for more than 50 year, 15 years now. I'm one of the founding members of Postgres School Europe. So we run Postgres conference in Europe every year in another country, and every other year we run Postgres conference Germany next week. In 2011, I joined EMC and bounced back between Pivotal and EMC quite a few times. And now I'm back in Pivotal. Okay, what I'm talking about here. First of all, why do we want to resolve addresses and coordinates? What's the reason uh, behind it? How we can do it? And of course, if we do something, if we change data, we want to measure what are the results, how exactly can we resolve coordinates, and what's next on my agenda. Looks like a typical table in a database, like you have a zip code, you have a street name, maybe you have another column for house number and a country. That's your format if you are very, very lucky. Usually you get something like this. <laughs> Just a string, some strange format. The first one is United States. Uh, you see they have a house number in front of a street. Australia the same. In Germany we have house number after the street, but we have a zip code in front of a city. <laughs> and I was told that this is an address of our office in Beijing. I can't read it. <laughs> okay, now, of course you can go and try and uh, find out on a map uh, where is this address, which country. Okay, that's easy. You can look at the country code here. You can maybe figure out, okay, which city to get an idea where your address is. But once you get down to a street name, it gets complicated. Can you tell me where these four addresses are? OK, it's in Berlin. That's easy. Based on the zip codes, what do you think? What's the distance between these four addresses? Can I have some estimates? Meters, kilometers? No idea? See, that's my problem. <laughs> Actually, very close. From one to four, it's like five kilometers. And we have like 200 zip codes in Berlin. So looking at zip codes doesn't really help you at all. Uh, how are we using this? In Germany, we have a number of insurance companies who actually look up your address. Like if you're involved in a car accident, uh, they want to figure out how far away is this car accident from your home. And if your insurance uh, contract covers like that your car has to be at home in a garage overnight and uh, your car is stolen, and they figure out, okay, how far away was your car stolen from your home? Was it really parked in your garage overnight or did you just park somewhere else where you found a spot? This kind of stuff you can figure out once you know an address and a geo-coordinate. Just an example. I mean, just looking at streets, we have saying we can't really figure out if something is very close. Once you map something on a map, you see, okay, it's really only three, four kilometers. There's a hotspot. Maybe we should have someone look into uh, all the data we have. Another example, HealthScare in Germany. Ever since 2006, we have this called HealthCard, which is really, really not a HealthCard. 
Uh, it is required to have a picture on this card. However, no one is verifying your card or the picture on your card. This happens all the time. <laughs> and what really happens in Germany is that you see people, more than one, uh, going with the same card to a doctor. Because no one can really verify the picture, no one can verify your address. And, well, uh, for the insurance company, it's really a problem because they cannot figure out if this is really a visit from a card holder to a doctor, or did someone else take this card and visit a doctor somewhere else. But once you know, okay, this is my doctor and this guy is living here, and now I have like three cities, different cities, and all of them are visiting a doctor regularly in different places. Well, this looks like funny. You should investigate it. You can do it once you know, okay, this is my doctor, it's the address of a doctor, and it's my address of where this guy lives. And if this doesn't match all the time, then you can look into this data. Another example, sales tax in, uh, in Europe, actually. So if you want, as a company, if you want to ship goods from one country into another, you have to charge the customer uh, the sales tax of the country where the customer is living in, not of your own country. They changed it recently, in 2015. So we have 27 countries in the European Union, we have 27 or 28 different sales taxes, and you need to know which sales tax you have to apply to whatever you sell to this customer. Oh, and by the way, you have to tell your customer the end sum, including sales tax, not just the base price. So you need to know where a customer lives, you need to figure out, okay, which country, city, and so on. And this was all designed to be more customer friendly. Well, um, I don't know if it's a thing here in, in US, but in, in Germany, they quite often ask you, can we have your zip code if you check out in a, in a cash register? And well, my standard answer is this zip code. This is one I provide all the time. Just to give you another example, what do you think about these four addresses down here? If you as a human look at these four addresses, they all look the same, right? It's the same address. Can you make a computer recognize this one as the same address? Quite complicated, right? So this one is the uh, first one is like we write it in Germany, including all the umlauts and as said here, uh, zip code in front of a city. Once you ask a uh, guy from English speaking country, you lose all the umlauts here, so it's no longer uh, ü, it's ue. If you're lucky, if you're unlucky, it just cuts off the dot. And you have to figure out what this address is early and where this address is. Okay, back to my, no, let's skip this. Um, why is this even in? Anyone from Europe here? You know where this is, probably? No? You know where this address is? No? Well, if you have to ship something to this address, you are in deep trouble. Because it's somewhere in northern Friesland. It's on an island. <laughs> Good luck shipping some, some pizza down there in the evening because ferry actually stops at 6 p.m. You can't go to this island uh, in the night. Another funny example here, also Germany, but in the south of Germany, it's Büsingen am Hochrhein, which belongs to Germany. You remember this zip code here? Which I use all the time if someone asks me for a zip code in Germany. Well, the funny thing, it's in Switzerland, but it belongs to Germany. <laughs> so if you have to go to Büsingen, you actually have to go into Switzerland and leave Switzerland to go into this small village. Uh, 
beginning of 2015, the Swiss changed their policy. Uh, whenever you want to deliver food into Büsingen, this village here, you actually have to pass customs. Which is okay, except that customs close at 6 p.m. And along the border of Switzerland, we have quite a few companies, pizza delivery and whatsoever, fast food delivery, who made a good job because prices are way cheaper in Germany than in Switzerland. And up until this year, they delivered quite a number of fast food in the evening into this area. Well, no longer, because it's closed 6 p.m. <coughs> if someone orders from here, well, you're in trouble. Another example from, from Denmark, from my friend Magnus, who I've seen this talk the first time. Looks like it's something in, uh, addressed in Denmark, right? Except it's more close to Poland, not in Denmark. And you need like four hours or five hours to go there by ferry. Well, you need to know this if you want to deliver something over there. Okay. Let's go and try to look up addresses here. First thing people try, and I've seen this live in production, they go and try to resolve zip codes. Some countries have four, zip, uh, four digits as zip code, like Switzerland, some have five, uh, some even six, like UK, where literally every house and every building gets its own zip code. Quite funny. Um, well, I've seen this, and until I pointed out, then they had to change it. As an example, this is the uh, northernmost point in Germany. And it's the southernmost point in Germany. Based on the zip codes we have, like we have 100,000 zip codes, so we can say, okay, every zip code is roughly 85 meters. Except it doesn't really work this way. What's the distance between these two zip codes? based on the mass we've seen on the slide before. Must be something like 730 kilometers, except it's 42. <laughs> Doesn't really work this way. Once they figured out that they really can't calculate distance between zip codes, well, they try to do something else at fair as well, but okay. Uh, what we really want to do is we want to resolve addresses to geo-coordinates. And the way we can do it is that you don't want to do it on your own, but you really want to use a service which knows about the subcodes because you've seen once you try to do it on your own, well, there's so much which can go wrong. But luckily we have a few services out there which provide you all the data. One of them as example is OpenStreetMap which is a worldwide map of, well, everything in a database. Another one, a commercial service is called ArcGIS from a company called Esri. Of course, we all know Google Maps. You probably all used Google Maps before. And the little sister, uh, Bing Maps. We also have regional services like Tiger, which just gives you addresses in the United States and nowhere else. But I'm really focusing here on OpenStreetMap at on ArcGIS. And I'm working on Google Maps as well, but it's not yet quite ready. Uh, OpenStreetMap itself has a very good data set once you can find something. The problem is actually with solving addresses to geo coordinates. And they have a web service called Nominatum. Uh, you send an address to Nominatum and it tries to find this address on a map. And vice versa. And then there's ArcGIS. They provide a the very same functionality and a few more additional services you can pay for. Like you can ask uh, ArcGIS, okay, not only give me the geo coordinate for this address, but I have two, these two points. Please calculate the driving route between these two points or cycling route or whatever you want to have. In order to do this from my database, because, well, I know 
work for with databases all my life, and I have all my data in a database, so I don't want to export all my data. I want to really look up it in a database. I wrote two modules. One is called PGOSM for OpenStreetMap, and one is called PGArcGIS. And the way you use it is that you use a number of functions. Here you can see an example for ArcGIS. ArcGIS.find, you just provide the address you want to look up, and if the service behind ArcGIS can actually resolve this address, then it will return the geo-coordinates. Uh, this is actually our main office for Pivotal in Palo Alto. And it's another function here, which is just a web around find, because services like Google Maps really like to have X and Y reversed. I'll show you in a moment how it works. So all it does is, here I have my minus 120 uh, first and my 37 as a second result set, and here it's just reversed. So I just reverse the two result sets I have here. To make it more easy, you just copy this value and paste it into Google Maps and see if it works. And just checking if it really finds my correct address, so here you have my with side set from a previous slide, 37 and minus 122, paste it into Google. You see, it really tells me, okay, that's my street address where we have our pivotal headquarter in Palo Alto. So I used ArcGIS to resolve my address to geo-coordinates, and I used Google to verify that I actually found the correct geo-coordinates for this address. I have a demo. I'll show you some examples. So we are in San Francisco. We are in a place called 255 South Airport Boulevard. if you need internet for a live demo. <laughs> okay, I use my find function here, arcgis.find. I provide my address as parameter and just execute this query in my database. Here we go. It's supposed to be the uh, geo-coordinates we have here for this convention center. Oh, that's actually a remote call to the ArcGIS server out of my database. Now I just reverse my reside set here. So Google, what about you? Yeah, looks correct. Let's use this short uh, coordinates. Looks about right. Okay, it's not exactly the convention center itself, but it's the address in front of a street. So, looks okay. and go the other way around. I use the same coordinates I have here, and now I want to resolve the nearest address to my coordinates. So I use the very same coordinates I got here as a parameter to a reverse search function, and it returns me back that we are in 255 South Airport Boulevard. Let me make this a bit more. Readable. I didn't know either. <laughs> but zip code is correct, county is correct. Yeah, South San Francisco is questionable, but actually, I said it here as well. That's why I got 
Well, that's what I got from Google, South San Francisco. Looks about right. Okay, coming from a company called Pivotal, working with a database called Greenplum, which is a Postgres fork. Uh, this was really intended to be a module for Greenplum first. So my first demo set was that I just went to the Pivotal website and got all the 17 offices we have worldwide and put them into a database. And then I tried to resolve all of them. Yeah, I think I can show this as well. So here I have all my 17 offices. Is this readable in the back? Let me. Better? And now I want to go and look up all the addresses to geo coordinates. So this one actually happens on the fly. So I select from my table with my addresses. And for every row I have, I have a call to ArcGIS and resolve this address to a geo coordinate. And you see it takes a while. Let me scroll this back. So it's not really something which happens in a database. It's really a call to ArcGIS for every row. And one result we see is that we actually get back 17 lines. But for two of them, I cannot resolve coordinates. One of them is China, and the other one is Korea, South Korea. And if you go to the ArcGIS website, you see that they specifically mention that they have weak data for China and for Korea. Every other country seems to be good, but not this two one. OK, same result. Same query with OpenStreetMap and Nominatum. Whoops, what happened? Nominatum itself can, out of the box, only resolve four of the 17 addresses. That's not much. On the other hand, I get China. Well, it's a start. Uh, tuning the address is a bit like removing where is Germany, Germany, Germany. The fourth line here is Germany. Uh, the correct city name is called Schwabach Frankfurt. If I remove the Frankfurt from the address string, uh, nominate, nominate him can resolve the address. So it needs some tuning in the address uh, that it can actually resolve it. It's not a problem of OpenStreetMap data, it's more a problem of Nominatum itself. It cannot recognize this address. And the best I can, could get was 10 addresses out of 17. Uh, the other seven, no way. What I tried, I could not resolve seven addresses in OpenStreetMap. But I got China and I got Korea. Not bad. OK, 17 addresses is not a big data set. Pivotal is a spin off from EMC and VMware. So let's go after EMC addresses. That's a bit bigger data set. Oh, I went to the EMC website, scrapped all the addresses they have, and split them up into not US and US addresses. And Non-US addresses, I got 196 addresses worldwide. So they have close to 200 offices worldwide, which are not located in the United States. 
And I even found some addresses which I cannot resolve in, even in Google Maps. And that's a straight link from the EMC website. I want to go to this office. <laughs> I want to find out what's there. <laughs> So it's not coordinates I looked up, it's really a link I got from the EMC website and it says, okay, we must have an office down there in the middle of the water. Okay, 196 addresses. Using ArcGIS, I was able to resolve 165 out of the box. That's pretty good. Using OpenStreetMap, I was able to resolve 71. It's like a third. And OpenStreetMap could find three places where which arches could not resolve. Well, that's not really helpful because I'm missing like more than 120. Um, statistics. I could resolve 68 locations in both services. Uh, that's about 34%. The minimum distance I got in the result set was 6 to 7 meters, which is pretty, pretty close. Maximum distance I got was more than 6 kilometers. So between what uh, ArcGIS and what OpenStreetMap returned as geocoordinates. And 6 kilometers, it's, well, too much. <laughs> uh, mean average is 540 meters and which is also way too high uh, to actually depend on this result set. And because of these numbers, I started working on a third data set, which will pull in data from Google. And let's just see how this works out. But I'm not yet there, it needs some more time. Okay. I probably want to show you the It's not food. It's not food. <laughs> okay, some funny thing you can do once you have all the coordinates to addresses. So I have all the EMC addresses here, US EMC addresses. This is a cached query because it takes uh, some time to actually resolve 200 addresses here. So I have, uh, did, I did this once and I stored the result in my database. And let's just say I have a third data set which is named after a certain company which you can find in the US. These are all thousand seven hundred seventy nine target shops in the United States. <coughs> also looked up to geo coordinates. So now I have a table with my EMC office addresses and I have another table with all of my target shops. Let's go shopping. First of all, I want to find my closest target shop around each and every pivotal office I have in the United States. I don't really limit it to the United States. I just want to see the nearest office, but because I only have target shops from the United States, obviously I won't get any results for offices in like Europe. So what I do here, I have a windowing function uh, a CTE and say, okay, here I calculate my, my distance between every location, pivotal location and every target location, and I order by distance. And here I select my first shop, my first result set from over here, and limit it to everything where I have a result and everything under 50 kilometers. Sorry, it's not my, it's 50 kilometers, so I only want to see results 
in a distance of 50 kilometers. You can see we are in San Francisco office here in Howard Street and the closest target is in 789 Mission around the corner. It's about 300 meters away. Same for Palo Alto. I have an office in Palo Alto and my next target is in Mountain View, which is about two miles, 3.7 kilometers away. I can do the same for all EMC offices, which should yield a little bit bigger resides set. That's the nearest target shop for every EMC office we have in the United States. And another fun query I have If you ever have to go to the pivotal headquarter, you really want to know how far you have to travel. Obviously, pivotal headquarter to pivotal headquarter is zero distance. And my office in Germany is about 9,000 kilometers away from my office in Palo Alto. And it's the distance for every other office we have worldwide except China and except uh, Korea. That's direct distance. That's not really travel distance like for a plane, which is a bit more, but it gives you an idea how far you have to travel. Okay, based on these two result sets I have, following conclusions. Every time you have an address in the United States, and you use ArcGIS, it's able to uh, resolve 100% of these addresses to geocoordinates. It's a pretty solid data set. Uh, if you go outside of the United States, except for countries like China, Korea, and three or two, uh, two or three more, uh, you get a resolve rate of about 80 to 90% worldwide. It's good, it's not perfect, but it's good. If you go to OpenStreetMap and use the same function in OpenStreetMap, in the United States, uh, about 60 to 70 percent, which is okay. It's not really good. If you go outside of the United States, it really drops below 40 percent, so less than half the addresses you have can be resolved by OpenStreetMap nominatum. Again, it's not really a data problem because all the data is there. All the streets and house numbers and everything are in the OpenStreetMap database, but this nominatum address resolver cannot resolve the address you feed into this resolver and make some use out of it. Another problem I have in OpenStreetMap is that whatever the guy who changed the data point decided to name it, like it's street, strass, or whatsoever, uh, well, that's the address feed, you, or that's the data feed you get back. There's not really a standard for uh, for the data in OpenStreetMap. So, mostly, yeah, mostly. Or whatever someone decided to name a specific field, you have to deal with it. And in ArcGIS, everything is formalized, everything is standardized. You have documentation about all the fields you get back in the result set. It's not the same in OpenStreetMap. It's quite complicated because you have to uh, try four or five different options which might or might not be in your result set. Once you get back data, once OpenStreetMap Nominatum can find something, uh, usually the results are better. So looking back at my query for looking up my pivotal headquarter in Palo Alto, ArcGIS returns me the street address. OpenStreetMap returns me the building. It really points me down to the building in my parking lot. But I have to find it. Does it have the address and the building, or just the building? Oh, the geocoordinates I get back point me to the building.
Oh, it's slow here. Yeah. Huh. Okay, we have some. Okay, here we go. So you see the result is slightly different. Voila. So whatever OpenStreetMap returns, it points me straight to the building here, not only to the street address here. So if you find something in OpenStreetMap, the results are usually more exact. But uh, actually, resolving an address to coordinates is more complicated in OpenStreetMap. Uh, this service I'm using there is free, yes, so basic resolving in both directions, addresses to coordinates and vice versa is free. Things like give me back a route between point A and B, uh, they charge you for. Okay. Yeah, lookups happen per row in Postgres. You see, it's not really fast because for every row, uh, Postgres starts a new function, does a new lookup, out to ArcGIS. And the reason I started this in Greenplum is because in Greenplum we do everything in parallel. So we have a system called segment servers here. And this function will happen in parallel on each and every of your segment databases. 
So if you have like 128 segment databases, you are 128 times faster looking up one table of addresses to geocoordinates. Okay, that's about enough marketing. Okay, what's next for me? Some of them solved already, so I need to do a bit code cleanup in my Python modules here. Needs a bit better error handling and configuration stuff. And as I mentioned before, I want to do the same for Google. So I actually want to be able to get my coordinates back from Google Maps as well, and then compare with the other two results that I have. Yes, please? Uh, if you save it in a database, like insert into your table, select form, then it's caching, yes. That's why I did with my, my EMC addresses and target addresses and such, because resolving 2,000 addresses takes like 10 minutes. And I want two packages for both Postgres and Greenplum. I'm working on this. I'm not yet there. Okay. Yeah, for Nominatim, I started talking with one guy who pointed me to the Nominatim developer. We'll see if they can get better results, if I can get some, feed them some data, what I'm using here. And there's also a new service called Photon I uh, seen recently. I want to see if this is maybe better for the service instead of Nominatim. Okay, a few questions I heard before and I want to answer straight away. Uh, why are not using Tiger, especially for US uh, data? Well, Tiger is really limited to United States data, uh, so it doesn't help me if I have addresses from outside the United States. Yes? Effectively, if you're using Tiger, Tiger Yeah, so under the hood, I can probably even do some integration between two or three databases, like have something on top of the three modules and say, okay, give me back whatever the best results that you can find. But it's another story. And yeah, Google Maps, I'm working on it, and Bing Maps, I don't want to work on it. Uh, you will find the slides on my website. And yes, that's a .la for Laos. Got it? Very cool. So, good, good for ice cream. What about the ice cream? I really love ice cream. <laughs> so, um, I did a little thing like this sort of HTTP module and da da, but the thing to do is you geocode it, geocode with it, and geocode against Google Maps, all wonderful. Um, but it never struck me as being more than a toy because of the blocking nature of it. Basically, your database stops. Until yeah, so this, the thing we do it is, as you asked before, yes, you can do caching. You don't want to look up this on the fly all the time. You really only want to look up it at those once and you install the result. And if, like me, we work in a data warehouse business, we usually have a step called ETL. If you integrate this into your ETL process, you will solve an address once when you load the data. And you don't really care how long it takes. But then you have your address. Yeah, you, yes, that's what you can do. Uh, at least ArcGIS provides such a service, I know. But then I really need to provide a function where I just say, okay, look up this table at once. Another thing I have to do. <laughs> yes? Here you go. A null is a pretty unsatisfying error code. What else can I do? I mean, if a lookup actually fails, like it cannot reach my web service, you get an error message back. So your, your function fails. Yeah, but if you, if you don't know, you get a null back. Why? Right. There is no result. The service works, everything works, but it cannot find anything for you. Null. Well, here you go. Yeah, 
Yeah, the way I do it here for OpenStreetMap, at least I ask for the most specific address. Anyway, that's why I get back my recite, which points to a building or to a street. If I go back two levels, I think it's level three then, uh, or 1115, don't know which way, uh, then you actually get back a street address from nominatum. Yes. Yes. The data is there. Nominatum can't resolve my address to data. If you talk Python modules, you need to have all the data in your database. Yeah. Yeah, look, even basic things like this place is called Schwabach Frankfurt in Germany. Nominatum cannot resolve it. Once I remove the Frankfurt here, oh, yeah, there it is. Not, it's not perfect, but I'm saying the entropy is yeah. through some kind of canonical list. That particular case, you still get a lot of deviation yeah. from So one, one step further you can do is that you actually load your OpenStreetMap data in your local data center and have a nominative web service running in your local data center. Then you don't have to do this over the internet. Everything gets faster. But yeah, you uh, nominative needs to get better for this. Yeah, it's it's quite big. Yeah. What's the zipped? What's the zipped? I think the zipped file for Planet is how many gigabyte? Yeah, that's hundred something gigabytes. Then you have to actually unpack it, extract it, and load into your database. Yeah, they have. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, it's very big. And all the data you're looking for is already in the OpenStreetMap database. Just nominate them or whatever service you're using. So Cannot find it. That's a, yeah. Well, let me, yeah, let me put it another way. Yeah. For the 17 addresses, I actually went to the OpenStreetMap website and I looked up all 17 of them. So all the data is in a database. Once you scroll down into the city, once you scroll down into, uh, into the street, you can find this address. It's there. Unlike, Open Street, um, unlike uh, ArcGIS, if you go to the ArcGIS website and look up this address, uh, all you see is one big blob. They don't have data. It's not there. That's why I started doing target and EMC addresses. Gives me at least 200 addresses to play around with. I guess you could randomly. I mean, if you had 10,000 addresses, randomly on the globe, and compare them. Why not? Almost doing that. Why not? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in a database already. No, that's not true. Where are my EMC offices? Here you go. So I only did this lookup once, insert into my table. No, actually, update table set my coordinates from my function call, and then I had my data. Yes? That's what you usually do during an ETL data loading stage. You do this lookup once and store the data along with your address. Because usually addresses never change, almost never change. <laughs> As long as you use this stuff in your own database, no one cares. If you provide additional services on top of it, no. yeah. That's not true of Google. We got, we got to read the terms. Yeah, we got to sign that whatever. Okay, come on, sue me. <laughs> yeah, so we had, I'll tell you what Google did. We had Google, and I don't, I think this was done years ago, but when we used Google, they stopped the private, had no, Google had no probe to server, so we were using it internally in our knock. Right? You couldn't probe the, the server. Yeah. Yeah, so Google has more restrictions on it, and if you do too many queries, it blocks you, this kind of stuff, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I not yet have a Google plugin, <laughs> because if I go and look up like 10,000 addresses at once, I blocked after 200 addresses. <laughs> okay, any more questions? So now I want to go randomly sample 10,000 addresses. Not on Google. And because you ask. <laughs> I really love ice cream. If you go to the Postgres guys around here, they know that I pick a dinner place with ice cream. Do you all use the geodata for fraud detection a lot and kind of inconsistency detection in general? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, geophysical, I have a lot of background in oil business. Their data sets are fantastic. They're way beyond. I mean, you can use it for everything. Once you can actually resolve addresses to coordinates, that's a basic problem. And once you have a coordinate, well, here you go. Yeah. I gave a few examples in the beginning uh, how we are using it. And I actually have a lightning talk about all my ice cream pictures, but it's not something for this talk. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>